there, Craig here. Today, we're going to make a hard apple cider. Okay, so this is uh, something that some of us have already done with cranberry juice and grape juice. We've made a meat brew. Um, this is basically the same idea, but it's called hard apple cider or hard cider. It's actually, I found out how popular it is on YouTube when I went around looking to see, do a little research, make sure I had my facts straight. Um, a lot of people are making this. Now, a lot of people do it from, you know, just by going out and getting a whole crap load of apples, pressing them and getting the juice um, out of them, and then you can use the, um, the skins from the apples uh, to create a yeast, uh, because the uh, skins from organic apples actually have uh, the yeast, uh, you know, bacteria on them, so um, you can use those to actually activate the, the brew just by putting the skins in. But it's a, t it's a hit and miss thing if you happen to mistakenly wash the apples, you wash off the, the yeast uh, spores and it won't work. So we're just going to use regular uh, baker's yeast, okay? I've got three cans of 100% pure apple juice made from concentrate and there's no preservatives in it. The only other thing is ascorbic acid, which is vitamin C, okay, and water, all right? So I've got the three cans of juice. Now, I'm going to do this on a small scale right now, and if I like the results, I might do a five-gallon batch, which would require um, probably about 23 of these cans. These were 99 cents each. It's one of the other reasons why I chose them, because if I do want to do a larger batch, it's only going to cost me, you know, $23 plus the sugar. So I've got the three cans of juice, one liter each. I've got a sanitized uh, four-liter jug to put this in, okay, because you need room at the top. I have an airlock fitted to a lid. I have a whole crap load of sugar here and a measuring cup. These are all sanitized. I have a hydrometer, which is sanitized. Um, I have scissors, and I have a can opener, which is sanitized as well. So we're ready to go here. So what are we going to do? Well, let's, let's move on here. Let's take off the, the airlock, sanitized. Hope you can see everything here. And what we're going to do here, I think I'm probably just going to, I don't actually have like a, you know, a can opener like that. I sort of have to rely on this thing. I'm just going to put a cut there. I'm going to cut here. And then I'm just going to uh, use the end of it here to make the hole bigger. That's how I do it in this house. Now, I don't know whether I'm going to be able to pour this without spilling it. Whoops. So we're going to use the funnel. Here we go. Whoa. Okay. So pouring the apple juice right into the container we're going to use to ferment this in. You with me so far? Can you handle this? Is this too much? I, I, can, I can back up. <laughs> There's one. Make sure your cans of um, of apple juice are not cold. You don't want them refrigerated. And if you store them in the basement like I did, it's too cold. You need them to have to, you need them to be room temperature. I actually warmed them up even a little bit more. I put them under some warm water for a little while. You don't want them to be any hotter than any warmer than you know 85 degrees or whatever. But on the on the back of this package of yeast, it does tell you how to activate the yeast. And it says to put it in a, a quarter cup of 100 degree water with a little bit of sugar. If you want to try that, that's up to you. I, I didn't bother. I'm trying to keep things simple here. I've never done that before. The other thing I, I need to talk to you about is a, a, a nutrient. Just in case there's not enough. Now, this is, this is pure apple juice. But just in case there's not enough nutrient in the juice... I'm going to add a yeast nutrient. Now, I have one that I've purchased, which comes in the form of a powder. <clears throat> but if you don't have access to that, where are we here? Okay. Then what you're going to have to do is create one. And the way you do that is you put some raisins or some dates or both in a uh, pot, maybe a half a cup of water or a cup of water. Uh, probably half a cup would be better. I don't know. Just judge it and boil them up, crush them. Same as what we did in the, uh, what I did in the, um, uh, in the inmate brew video. Go, go look for that video and you'll see what I did. You just, you just need some real fruit in here. Now this is 100% apple juice, so it's probably fine, but I'm gonna play it safe and use just a tiny bit of, uh, of yeast nutrient here. 
You can try it without doing this, and I'm pretty sure it would work fine. I didn't sanitize a spoon. A little spoon to use for this. Uh, here we are. I'm just going to take and sanitize this little spoon. Okay. I'll just go in and get some of these here. This is an eighth of a teaspoon. Okay, I'm, I'm positive that'll be just fine. Probably too much, but it won't hurt. It won't hurt anything. All right. So that goes in. And then I'm going to, I'm going to start with, uh, I'm going to start with a cup of sugar. This is corn sugar. There's about a cup. Now, I do have a sanitized thermometer, so why don't we... A thermometer. Hydrometer here. The, th the hydrometer and the uh, little tubing here, tube thing here is sanitized. So what I'm going to do is use my funnel, which has been sanitized as well, and I'm going to carefully pour some of this into here. And we're just going to see what the specific gravity is without... Whoops! Woo! <laughs> Uh, without, without anything added. That's 1.042. So you got about the strength of a beer here, alcohol-wise. Make sure I've got the lid handy here. Um, so let's try... This is probably going to be wet now. Hmm, anyway, so it'll probably clog up on me. But anyway. Let's uh, slowly... Get this in there. <laughs> okay, so there we have a a cup of sugar. We're gonna shake that around. And all this shaking is good for it because it puts oxygen in solution to help the uh, yeast. Okay? So we're just going to look and see if there's anything going to sink to the bottom, and then we're going to do another hydrometer test. Okay? A little bit of sugar on the funnel. Doesn't matter. Very interesting. Now, let's see what we've got. Point zero six two. I don't have my calculator with me here, so I can't do the the math. Uh, just a sec. Just going to grab my other hydrometer here. Hydrometer has uh, alcohol potential alcohol readings on it. So one point zero six two turns out to be approximately nine percent alcohol. What do you What do you think? I think we're going to drop in another, another cup. What the heck? You know what I mean? Separate the men from the mice on this one. Here we go. Okay. Now, we've got 1.080. So, this isn't exactly going to be... <laughs> You know, yeah, that's, that's great. It's going to be very strong, but that's what, I just want to experiment and see what happens. Now, finally, we throw in our yeast. Something tells me not to put in the entire package, because this is a lot of yeast for a little thing like this, so... I don't know. Oh, what the heck. There. Once, Once again, I'm going to give it a good shake. And I'm going to shake this, and I'm going to leave it for a few minutes, and then I'm going to shake it again. Okay, so I'm going to leave this for a few minutes, we'll come back in a couple seconds, we'll shake it again, we'll finish this off.
Okay, here we are. <laughs> um, it's been about 10 minutes. Let's just see. Yeah, there's still some yeast particles in there. They'll, they'll, uh, they'll set up. And, and if by tomorrow, um, this isn't, hasn't started yet, I'll put this lid back on and I'll give it another shape. But I'm, I'm reasonably sure with all that sugar in there and that yeast nutrient that we're not going to have any trouble. So let's take this off and put on the airlock apparatus. Nice and tight. And we need some water. And I always forget to get something to water in it with. And away we go. There. There you have it. Hard apple cider. Um, you, it can't get much easier than that. I mean, you could, you could just buy it in a container like this and then just take some out and add the things to it. But um, I couldn't find this type of, of apple juice in a large container like this where I shop. So, um, you know, I just went with these tins. But no, no bother. I mean, it's, it's going to work. And um, you can experiment with different yeasts. Um, uh, you can uh, use your favorite beer yeast, an ale yeast. Um, you can use a champagne yeast. That will suck more of the sugar out of it, and you'll end up with a more uh, drier uh, product, with less uh, sweetness to it. The reason I'm doing it with just regular baker's yeast is because this can be found in the market. The same with these. Okay? And so this is something that anybody can do. Now, I don't advocate underage drinking. Please do not uh, go beyond your local uh, laws. And only do this if you're of age. Um, I don't want to be responsible for any accidents, please. And it, again, if you can't find a yeast nutrient, which uh, this isn't available in the supermarket, um, get some raisins. Now, raisins, they have to be, they don't have, they, they can't have any sulfite on them. Sometimes they spray sulfite, similar to the metabisulfite solution we use for sanitizing. Sometimes they spray some of that on the raisins. Uh, to preserve them. Um, so I don't know how you can tell. I, I, the bag that I bought, is it still here? Yeah, sometimes I, I munch on these. Um, on the ingredients, it just says raisins and sugar. So it doesn't mention sulfite. Um, so I assume, hmm, I assume they don't have any. So get some raisins, about a handful. And if you can find dates, we still got the dates? Yep, they're up there. Um, either or, I use both because what the heck. And uh, just t put them in about a cup of water in a pot in a little saucepan and just boil them up. And as you're boiling them up, uh, boiling them up, take a fork and just crush them. Get all the juices out of them and things out of them, okay? And then when you've got about half a cup of water left, you know, it's going to reduce a little bit. Um, you'll see the water is all yellow and has the color of the raisins and the dates. Then you just pour them through a sieve into your into your uh, your apple cider um, or your apple juice. Uh, but make sure it's not boiling hot when you do that. Make sure it's cooled down so you don't kill anything. Um, and that's that will help your your nutrient. I have done this several times and it works like a charm. Okay, but it's just easier for me to get a hold of this stuff because I can. But if you can't, then that's what you do. Okay, I do have a inmate brewing uh, video down on my list. Uh, somewhere. It's not too far. I shouldn't be too far down, actually. Uh, maybe I'll just put a link to it on the screen here so you can go and watch that. So it does have a similar process to this, but using um, the raisins and dates for yeast nutrient. So um, that's all. Thanks a lot for watching. Um, just one of another big chain of videos that I'm going to put out. Um, check out my website, craigfairway.com. I'm building it slowly. I'm trying to get some products on there, uh, home brewing products that you can purchase from the affiliate website, High Gravity, that I'm affiliated with. You click on the links on there to buy the stuff, and I make a little, little profit off it. Um, I'm going to be putting stuff about albinism on there, stuff about um, just a lot of different areas I want to cover on my website. And it's just because I'm shooting all these videos every night, I haven't had time to work on it. So um, it's, it's going to happen. Just keep checking back. There are advertisements on the website as well, and you know why they're there. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Where's my beer? Ah.
there, Craig here. Today, we're going to make a hard apple cider. Okay, so this is uh, something that some of us have already done with cranberry juice and grape juice. We've made a meat brew. Um, this is basically the same idea, but it's called hard apple cider or hard cider. It's actually, I found out how popular it is on YouTube when I went around looking to see, do a little research, make sure I had my facts straight. Um, a lot of people are making this. Now, a lot of people do it from, you know, just by going out and getting a whole crap load of apples, pressing them and getting the juice um, out of them, and then you can use the, um, the skins from the apples uh, to create a yeast, uh, because the uh, skins from organic apples actually have uh, the yeast, uh, you know, bacteria on them, so um, you can use those to actually activate the, the brew just by putting the skins in. But it's a, t it's a hit and miss thing if you happen to mistakenly wash the apples, you wash off the, the yeast uh, spores and it won't work. So we're just going to use regular uh, baker's yeast, okay? I've got three cans of 100% pure apple juice made from concentrate and there's no preservatives in it. The only other thing is ascorbic acid, which is vitamin C, okay, and water, all right? So I've got the three cans of juice. Now, I'm going to do this on a small scale right now, and if I like the results, I might do a five-gallon batch, 